let us start working with the orders let's go to the user screen that we have where is it the user screen and if I come to the user screen here we can access the user screen from another tab that we should add here so let's come down and let us add the tab first of all Let's give this one a name of orders and let's change the icons to be where, where is the icon? Icons dot shopping back. And let's give it a color of green accent maybe let's check what it looks like great now this um, consumer here needs to be changed and we will change it later firstly let us do some management here so if I increase this inner screen and I increase the widgets inside the screens folder let's make a new folder call it wishlist and I'll bring all the wishlist related item inside of this so this one here let's go to here full wishlist and empty wishlist so I'll just take this one and I'll take this one and grab it and bring it to the wishlist great let's make another folder name it cart and for the cart let's get the cart screen first of all and from the widgets I'll also take the full cart and the empty cart and drag it into the cart screen that I've just made or the cart folder now likewise I also want an orders folder so let's make one orders and for this orders what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the same exact things as this cart so let's just copy all of this three and bring it down to orders oh my bad copy it go to the cart and paste it here I'll just minimize this go to flutter go to the shop CPT go to lib here where we have this folder let's go to the orders and I'll have this exact same thing so I'll just copy it come to the cart and alright we have it here great now let us go to the orders and change it a bit firstly I'll rename this to be order screen so orders then I need the full cart and rename it to be full order go to the empty cart and change it to be empty order great
right let us fix the errors first of all so inside the card screen let's see what's wrong here I'll just remove this too great now let's go to the orders and firstly let's change everything here so I'll control F and find all the place that it says cart should now be changed to be order let's also go to the empty order and also do the same all cart should become order Let's also go to the full thing, change it here, and that's good. So with that, for the auto screen, let's get rid of all the errors. Now we have this, so we can go to the main screen and add the route name. So order screen dot route name ctx should just return us a const order screen and inside of this order screen we need to use the empty order order and for this I'll just give it a we do not need this Let's just get rid of this. Give it an item count of six. We do not need this bottom sheet section. So we can just get rid of this entire bottom sheet. and I'll just comment this entire container for now I'll fix it later let's bring the global methods so global methods What else is wrong? Okay, let's go to the empty card screen. Let's go to the full order. And here, let's just get rid of this too. Network image. So what I'll do is I'll just remove this and give a network image here. I have this image from Pexel. You can use any image you want. I'll just copy this and paste it right here. 
come down where we have this uh, flexible order attribute dot title I'll just make it to be a title comment this out We do not need this subtotal. So let's just remove this. We also do not need this shipping. I'll just comment it out. Also comment this one out. And also let's comment this one out. Okay, so for the empty orders, we have your order is empty, your wish list is empty. How's that even working? And let's go to the user screen where we have this orders so this is the widget for it and whenever we click this we are moving to the wishlist screen which should instead be the order screen great so let's save it so we can actually go to the order screen and see what the orders look like so let's just go into orders your order is empty so let's go to the order screen order empty and this should be empty cart great so this is the look we have for the empty order screen now let's have a look at what does the full order screen looks like I'll just change it to be false Okay, so for the order screen, I mean the full order screen, let us come up. And for the order screen, let us also get rid of this. And instead, let us just return the full order. Full order. And we do not need to supply any product ID. So I'll just remove it and go to the full order. Go up where we are expecting this ID. And we could just get rid of this. So with that, let us also save this.
So this is what each order should look like. Now let's go to the full order where we have this price. So we have this price here and after that I want also the quantity. So let's check where is the quantity. Looks like we don't have any. So what I'll do is just uncomment one of this rows and say that this is subtotal. We also need one for the quantity so I'll just copy it and paste it here and say that this is for the quantity. Quantity. The text could just be empty for now. We will change it later when we need to. And also, let's get rid of this text here. We will change it when we need to. Okay, that is great. So that was it for the design of the order screen. And in the next video, we will start working with the state management for it. Let us now implement the order provider class. So let's go to the models and providers and make a new file. Call it order.dart. Order.dart. And inside of this file, let's make a class, call it order, what was the name before? Order, all right. Order with a change notifier, of course. And let's figure out certain things. So firstly, I need a final of type string, and I'll just copy this. We need an order ID. we need user ID to find out who's the user that's ordering we need the product ID as well we need the title the price and I'll just keep string for everything now and I'll change all of those later I need the image URL need the quantity and lastly I need the timestamp so timestamp and name it order date so order let's make the constructor and this should be required this dot order ID user ID product ID title price image URL order date quantity so in the next lecture we will go further with this all right so come to the card screen and let us start working with placing an, an order so I'll come down where we have this bottom checkout section and for now we are whenever we click onto it we are initializing or we are attempting to pay with the card so I'll just comment this out because I want to deal with the card thing later firstly let's make a Let's initialize a new UUID, so var underscore UUID equals to UUID. And this randomly generated UUID should be our order ID. So I'll just say final order ID equals to underscore UUID dot V4. Afterwards, Let's make a, a user, user equals to firebase op dot instance dot current user. Great. So this will be our user ID.
now let's make a final underscore UID equals to should be our user dot UID great I'll just cut it out and bring it here nice now what we want to do is we want to say await firebase firestore dot instance dot collection and this collection name should be orders dot doc and this doc should be our order ID that we made dot set and inside set we need to pass a map now if you think about it we need all of this so what I'll do is just I'll copy copy it and just paste it here for now don't worry I'll change it so what we want to pass is we want to pass order ID and this order ID should come from the order ID that we have so the order ID and now we can just copy this and have it one two no one two three four five six seven let us paste it seven times so one two three four five six seven so let's just cut it okay so paste it again all right so first one was already the second one should be our user ID and I'll just remove this because we will have different values for each of those okay so user ID we have the product ID we have the title we have the price we have the image URL we have quantity and we have order debt so now let's get rid of this great now if you think about it we have to pass each of this and we can we already have this user ID and we can get it from the underscore UID that we have underscore UID we can get the product ID now to get the product ID let us go to the cart here this now it will become a big hassle if we start adding things one by one so the best solution would be to access the provider so let's write here final cart provider equals to provider dot off card provider context so with this card provider what we can do now is come down here and say card provider dot So card provider dot card list dot for each and for each this value should be our order value so order value 
now instead of this what we can do is cut this thing out and paste it here so now uh, we can access the product ID and everything so for that let's go to the cart here and firstly let's say we need a final string product ID so make it a required this dot product ID now we have a few errors to solve so let's give a product ID and this should come from the value dot product ID same thing goes here So the PID Alright, so with that Let's come to the card screen And now we can access everything from here So the Order value dot Product ID Order value dot title order value dot price order value dot image URL order value dot quantity and time stamp dot now let's pass an async here So with that, let's add something to the orders. So I'll just add it to the cart and check out. Now let's go to our Firebase and see if things are working out for us. Alright, so we have this order section where we have all the order we need. That is great. Let us do some optimization for the orders that we are doing. Let's come down and where we are doing all of this. So, from this until this. So, I'll just... cut it out and do a try and then a catch because we might have errors so I'll just paste everything inside this try block and one more thing we need to cut this thing cut it in and bring it inside this async so with that we are pretty optimized with the orders let's fetch all the products with a provider for the orders I mean uh, order provider so we can fetch everything from the Firestore and show it likewise let's go to the product.dart and I'll just copy this entire class copy it and paste it underneath now let's start changing first of all we do not need any of this alright and this should be a list of order name it underscore orders cut it out and this should be after this one great so list of order and we call it get returns the underscore order we name it get orders we can just call here underscore order dot clear underscore order should it be 
So I'll just copy this and use everywhere where it says underscore product. Let's just get rid of this and this should be our order. this too we do not need this and we do not need this and what I'll do I'll just comment this out so in case if we need it we need it great so with that let we have a few different things that we need to change here so I'll open up the orders again and right here we have element.getApp so I'll just copy this and paste this one right here this one here 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 now let's get the corresponding names from the Firestore so we have our order ID this should be the same name as this so order ID then we have the user ID let's get the user ID We have the product ID. We have the title. We have the price. We have the image URL. We have the order date. And we have the quantity. Now quantity should be dot to string because that's how we initialize it for the orders. Also the price should be dot to string. And with that we are good. In the next lecture we will fetch everything and display it accordingly now let us fetch the orders in the order screen so firstly for this uh, inside the order screen where we have this body and we are using this list view builder let us uh, wrap this in a future builder so I'll wrap this in a stream builder and I'll just change the stream builder to be a future builder we do not need this object and this stream should become the future now to access the future let us firstly come up here and say final order provider equals to provider dot of order provider Ah, this name should be order provider order provider context and the future that it depends on should be our order provider dot fetch orders And this item count should come from order provider dot 
get orders dot length let's go to the order get orders now what's the error Now afterwards, we still have a few different things to do, so just a second. Let's wrap this full order in a change notifier. So wrap with a widget and this widget should be change notifier provider dot value and now the value should come from our order provider dot get orders at the index So let's go to the full order screen and full order screen. We can get rid of this. We don't even need to show any of this. Just get rid of this. And we can initialize our final order equals to provider dot off order context order dot product ID let's pass this here and for the image we want to pass order dot image URL for the title order dot title we will come back to it later for the price let's pass order dot price dollar sign dot quantity So with that let's save it and let's go to the order screen and s check out what orders are looking like. Yeah, where is it?
please make sure that you have added the provider to your multi providers also come to provider order.dart and make sure that you are fetching from the orders and you should be good to go now let's write a logic for showing only the correspondent orders for each user so for example if I have ordered these two things some other user should not have the same exact orders in their screen right because they didn't do it I did it what we could do is come to the order.dart where you have this future uh, fetch orders after the collection you say dot where and where the user ID so this user ID comma control space is equal to so we have to make a UID now to your UID so let's say final firebase alt equals to underscore alt uh, is underscore alt equals to firebase alt dot instance now we say user user equals to underscore alt dot current user and var underscore uid equals to user dot uid so this under this u user id is equals to this underscore uid so with that with this line of code we will only generate things that should come for this user and not for someone else so for example this is my anonymous account and you see i have these two orders here if i log out and use my google to get in and then go to the orders there is nothing here now let's make this thing whether to show the empty screen or the full screen a bit more dynamic because this is something that is not dynamic at all so i'll just remove this and here what we can do is call order provider dot get order dot is empty if that is the case you call this empty screen or if that is not the case we call the other thing now a better option would be to wrap this entire thing so wrap with stream builder and change this stream builder to be a future builder and this future should come from the future that we have here so I'll just cut it and we do not need this future anymore so get rid of this and maybe get rid of this just remove this center right great and for this one here, I'll put a dollar sign and call our order provider dot must be in a third bracket, of course, order provider dot get orders dot length. All right. Let us now get started with deleting products from the Firestore. So come to the full order screen and where you have this icons.close. Let's write our logic here. So firstly, call our Firebase Firestore.instance.collection and the collection's name was orders. So orders dot doc and the doc is our order dot order ID dot delete and that is it
So with that, let's save it. And if I press this and go back, you see one of them is gone. Now let us only allow the user to make an order only if the payment is successful. So this response that we have in the card screen, let's make a, a new variable stripe transaction response and name it response. Let's remove this var. So this response is this response. And let's do the null checks here. Now let's come down. After this wait with card, what we want to do is call if response dot success is equals to true. If this is the case, we want to do this all of this thing. So I'll just copy this much or cut it out and paste it right here. Not really sure what went wrong. And we should be good. So with that, we are done coding the logic that that we need for making a successful payment before we put an order. Now, one last optimization for doing bringing up this refresh indicator. If I pull on this, you see we have a refresh indicator. So make sure that your feed screen is a state full screen, and inside the state class, I have made a method here so future void get products on refresh and what all what I'm doing is fetching the products and after it's done so I'm awaiting after it's done I'm doing a set state just that and then I'm just calling this name in the body inside a widget called refresh indicator for which we have an on refresh attribute and I'm just passing the name of the method that is it